Hey y'all, this lesson is on function notation and evaluating functions. So we will be diving into what function notation is and then how to evaluate functions using algebraic method, the table of values, and a graph. This is going to prove to be useful as we explore all different types of functions. We're going to be uh, using evaluating functions to help us graph functions, do tables of values, look at uh, information based on these functions. So you're going to be seeing this over and over and over again. And basically the key to function notation and evaluating functions is using substitution. So ba substitution basically is you, you just sub it in, you just put it right in, kind of like a basketball game. When you have a sub, you take the one person out and you sub in the other person. So one of the applications of this is determining if something is a solution or not. And we know that in a point, there's an X and a Y value. So we plug in the Y value for Y and the X value for X. Now that you've subbed the value in, you can simplify. And if it's a true statement, if it ends up being true, then yes, it is a solution. And if it ends up being false, then no, it is not a solution. And in this case, it was true. So yes, it is a solution. And then we can also use substitution to um, create tables of values, which help us see lots of things. We can use it to see x-intercepts, domain and range, or to graph our function. So we have this equation, y equals negative x plus four. And I have chosen these x values for a table of values. And these are not necessarily the x values that you have to choose. They're just the ones I chose. I like to pick values around zero, um, given that the function is, has graph around zero. But We'll just we'll talk about that later. But you can pick any values you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> I picked these values. I don't know why I just did. And we are just subbing in that x value that I chose to find the y value. And this minus a negative becomes positive 4. And we end up with 8. So that point is negative 4, 8. And keep in mind that just because this is negative doesn't mean that you can drop that negative. That negative is part of the function and we have to leave it in there. So just be very careful about your negatives and not losing them. And then we do that for every single X value that I chose. We get six. And then when we plug in zero, we get four. And then when we plug in five, whoops, we get negative one. So now we have this set of points and we can use our set of points to draw our function. So we have negative four, eight, which is actually off the graph a little bit. Negative two, six, zero, four, five, negative one. And hopefully at this point, you can kind of see a trend in these points. Now keep in mind that these are not the only points on this line. They're just some of the points and they're the points that I chose. So if you had chosen different points, you would still end up with this line because they all are based on that equation. So this was the equation representation of our function. This is a table of values representation of our function. And this is a graphical representation of our function. So they're all just different pictures or different representations of the same exact function. And they are all tied together. Isn't that neat? So next page, we get into actual function notation. And basically function notation is just a way to name functions, especially if you get into multiple functions in one problem. If we name them all Y, then it's a little hard to distinguish. And we can also use them to evaluate functions. So 
it's off it's used in place of y and one of the most common names as a function is f of x now we can use different letters to name functions like g of x h of x j of x or you can use all the letters if you want to and we're just naming the function so um, one of the misconceptions is that this indicates multiplication because these two components are side by side, but it's actually read f of x. So we're naming the function f and we're evaluating it at the variable x. And this enables us to evaluate functions uh, when it looks like the examples below, which is this part, evaluate which is essentially a fancy word for substitute. So what we did on the previous page, we're just gonna be doing again on this page. We have this function f of x equals three x squared minus six x plus 11. So the function is f and we are evaluating it at x. Now in part a, it says f of two, which means that we want to take the function f and evaluate it at x equals two. So in place of x, we're going to use two instead. We're gonna be substituting. So we have three times two squared minus six times two plus 11. And then at this point, you can either just type that in your calculator or you would use order of operations where we square the two, multiply those, multiply those, and then add. So f of two is 11, and that's how you read it. f of two is 11, which means that when x is two, y is 11. Easy, right? The next one wants us to evaluate at negative one. So go ahead and pause it and try it and then come back. Hopefully yours looks like this. Oh, got kind of wonky with my colors, but that's okay. So we're gonna do the same process. Negative one squared is positive one and then plus six plus 11. So we have three plus six plus, a, whoops, 11 is 20, which means that F of negative one is 20, which is negative one comma 20. Now let me show you something in the calculator. If I go to Y equals and I type in my function, three X squared minus six X plus 11, and then I go to my table, then, whoa, I don't know why it's way up there. And I go to negative one. When X is negative one, what is Y? 20. When X is two, what is Y? 11. So you can see that instead of doing this algebraically like we did, you can actually use a table of values. This last one is a little different because you can't use a table of values for this. Uh, I guess you could, but it'd be pretty tedious. And you can't type this in your calculator because it has the variable in it. Now you technically can type it in your calculator and it will give you an answer, but it's not the correct answer. Unless you have like a TI Inspire, then maybe it will. But if you type this in your calculator and you come up with a number value, that is not an accurate value. That means nothing. So we are gonna have to do a little bit of work on this. We are still going to sub it in. Everywhere that there is an X, we will substitute it. And then we need to simplify. And this is gonna kind of go over simplifying polynomials a little bit. By definition of an exponent, X plus one squared means X plus one times itself. And then I'm going to distribute this six. And then I'm going to multiply 
the two binomials, we can use the distributive method. And we get x squared plus 1x plus 1x is plus 2x plus 1. And I can simplify this a little bit. And then I can distribute the 3. And now at this point, all we can do is add like terms. And our six X's add to zero. So we end up with three X squared plus eight. So that's the correct answer. If you try to type that in your calculator, it might come up with some random number. That's not it. And then down here, we have some uh, examples of different representations. We have a table of values. Now in the screenshot of this table of values, you aren't given the actual function, but you don't need the function. We have the table and we know that we're trying to find f of three. So we're trying to, if the function of f is f of x, then we're saying evaluate the function at three, that indicates that x is three. So when x is three, what is the corresponding y value? Two. So f of three is two, and we would write that three comma two, which you already kind of saw when I showed the calculator, but that's how you do that. And then if you're given a graph instead, and it's still f of three, that means that we locate three on the x axis, one, two, three, and we see where it's mapped to on the graph. So this is my graph, this little upside down U. When X is three, it's mapped here, which is two. So this point is three, two, which means that F of three is two. So these were the same functions actually, I believe. But there are those are three different representations of how to evaluate functions. I'm hoping that this helps you as you use this throughout algebra. Um, that's all for this lesson. If you um, have any questions or need any help, I'm happy to be there for you and I'll see you next time.